Okay, thank you, Akin. Um, so the topic of my talk is on chronic visceral hypersensitivity, which refers to an enhanced perception of pain at the level of the internal organs, and is believed to contribute significantly to abdominal pain in IBS patients, as the majority of these patients display CVH to colorectal distension. And it seems that mast cells play an important role in this phenomenon, and there are multiple studies um, underscoring that either the number of mast cells is uh, increased in the colon of these patients, or that they release excessive amounts of mediators that act upon the efferent nerves, activate them, sensitize them, resulting in the CVH phenotype. And there's some strong evidence indicating that mast cell stabilizers or histamine H1 receptor antagonists can reduce and even normalize these effects. So histamine is the most important mast cell mediator and can bind to four different receptor subtypes. And we turned our attention towards the histamine H4 receptor. So it's located on immune cells, among which dendritic cells and mast cells. It's also present on enterocytes, and although still a matter of controversy, it is believed that it's expressed in central and peripheral nervous systems. Its role so far, as we know, is um, mediating inflammation, and there are already a couple of clinical trials looking at immune-mediated disorders and how they can be treated with histamine H4 receptor antagonists. But there's also some preclinical data indicating that H4 receptors are important in mediating somatic and neuropathic pain. Uh, and that is actually while uh, working at the University of Antwerp in the group of Benedicta Winter, we decided to look whether this receptor is also involved in modulating uh, visceral pain. So we worked in a rat model of CVH in which um, rats display enhanced pain perception and pain responses to colorectal distension, as you can see from the red curve here. And we treated them with increasing doses of a selective H4 receptor antagonist. And we found that as the dose of this compound increased, we could completely normalize visceral sensations in these CVH rats. Um, whereas there was no effect when we gave the compound to healthy control rats, indicating that it was a um, pathophysiological specific mechanism. However, at that point, we were not able to dissect further at what level this effect takes place. Um, is it by reducing uh, histamine release? Um, by colonic mast cells uh, via histamine H4 receptors? Was this receptor expressed on the colonic efferents? Was it a centrally mediated effect? We didn't know. And the matter was complicated further by the fact that there's no good antibodies available for histamine H4 receptors. So in this study, we decided to take a more functional approach and see if we could find evidence of functional expression of histamine H4 receptors on colonic sensory neurons. And we looked at their cell bodies in the DRGs, uh, but also at the efferent endings in the colonic wall. And we determined, or we sought out, um, to assess how this is affected and altered in the CVH state. So for this, we used our mouse model of chronic visceral hypersensitivity, which is a post-TMBS model in which mice display chronic CVH after resolution of the TMBS colitis. And um, our group in Adelaide has shown in the previous papers that this affects the colonic efferent endings in the gut wall, the cell bodies in the DRGs, but there's also effect on the second order neurons in the spinal cord, um, and visceral pain responses in vivo are also enhanced in these CVH mice. So what we did is we looked at the efferent cell bodies in the DRGs, and we identified those neurons receiving colonic sensory input um, by performing retrograde tracing of these colonic neurons. Um, we looked at both thoracolumbar and lumbosacral regions, harvested the DRGs, cultured them. And then in calcium imaging experiments, we looked at the ability of a selective histamine H4 receptor agonist to induce calcium fluxes in these neurons. And we also assessed the effect of histamine, which is the panhistamine receptor agonist, the reference compound. So as you can see here from this representative tracing, we did find evidence of functional expression of these uh, receptors in the RG neurons. Um, and we can see here that we see in the blue, blue neurons these nice, uh, slow, long, transient calcium fluxes uh, that were mimicked very much by uh, histamine. So when looking at healthy control mice, we found evidence of expression um, of histamine H4 receptors in colonic DRG neurons from both thoracolumbar and lumbosacral regions. And it was very strikingly that um, there was almost no uh, cells responding um, that did not receive colonic input um, into their efferent body. And it was only or mainly the colonic neurons that responded to formidal histamine. 
And we found that there was a tendency of a higher proportion of cells responding to formatil histamine in toric columbar compared to lumbosacral regions. We did the same in the CVH mice, and again, very strikingly, um, it was mainly the population of colonic neurons that responded at both regions, uh, and responses to formatil histamine were virtually absent in the non-colonic counterparts. So this time we did see that um, it was quite enhanced um, proportion of colonic neurons responding in our columbar regions, and these are the regions that contain the splanchnic efferents that we've shown in previous studies are very important in um, underlying the CVH state in this uh, post-TMBS model. Um, and it's not only when comparing thoracolumbar compared to lumbosacral mice that we saw this functional upregulation. It's also when you compare the healthies compared to the CVH. It's, it all po points towards this enhanced upregulation of H4 receptors in colonic thoracolumbar GOG neurons. We confirmed that all the neurons responding to form methyl histamine also respond to histamine itself, as I show here, and it's quite apparent that the neurons that respond to the H4 agonist show histamine response quite similar to the one um, of form methyl histamine, but when you look at cells that do not respond to the H4 agonist, they show a very sharp uh, and short histamine response. It's quite different to what we see in the H4 um, responding neurons. And we believe that this is related to differences in the affinity of histamine for the different histamine receptors. So when you look at the proportion of colonic neurons that respond to histamine in both regions and in healthies and CVH mice, we again find that it's mainly skewing in thoracolumbar regions uh, that respond to histamine. But overall, there was no difference in the proportion of colonic neurons responding to histamine in healthy and CVH mice. When you then dive into this specific population further and you quantify how many, for instance, of these 17 histamine responses, responsive colonic neurons also respond to four methyl histamine, that was seven out of 17. Whereas in the CVH mice, 20 out of these, it's 15 of those that also respond to the H4 agonist. So again, pointing towards this importance of colonic neurons in thoracolumbar regions of CVH mice. So to further investigate how H4 receptors could be important in, in mediating and sensing colonic sensations, we looked at functional co-expression with key nociceptors such as trip one and trip one by incubating the neurons with capsaicin and AITC. What we found is that regardless of the region or whether it's a healthy or CVH mice, if it's a colonic neuron that responds to formidal histamine, there's very high functional co-expression with trip v one trip a one or both. Whereas if the neurons do not respond to the H4 agonist, we see that these percentages are much lower, indicating that there could be a key, key um, coupling mechanism between H4 and trip v one or trip a one so to summarize, we found evidence of functional expression of H4 receptors in colonic DRG neurons of both thoracolumbar and lumbosacral regions, indicating that they could be important for mediating colonic sensations. However, the proportion of cells responding to four methylhistamine was higher in thoracolumbar compared to lumbosacral regions, with high functional co-expression with nociceptive channels, the TRIP channels, indicating that they could have be specifically important for mediating colonic pain. In addition, the functional upregulation in the CVH mice indicate that they could be important um, from a pathophysiological point of view in underlying the CVH state. And we sought to determine this further by doing electrophysiological recordings of splanchnic efferent neurons um, and seeing how they respond to distension in the presence or absence of a specific histamine H4 receptor antagonist. So what we found is when corrected for baseline activity, efferent discharge in these CVH mice was significantly higher compared to the healthy control mice. Then when you add increasing doses of a selective histamine H4 receptor antagonist, we see that we get this nice dose response curve in the CVH mice <coughs> without affecting efferent discharge in the healthy control. We further pieced about um, this, this population of CVH units and what we could see is that about a two-third of them responded to the histamine H4 receptor antagonist. And interestingly, it are those units that have a very high rate of firing to start with, and most likely are the sensitized ones, whereas those that do not respond to histamine H4 receptor antagonists are within the range of the healthy controls, which is an interesting finding in its own right. 
So that adds to our conclusion, our summary, that inhibition of histamine H4 receptors dose dependently reduces enhanced deferent firing in the CVH mice um, and coincides with the function, the in vivo data I, I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. And uh, does make me believe that histamine H4 receptor antagonists could potentially be interesting new targets when trying to develop new treatment strategies uh, for visceral pain. And these are all the people that contributed to the work uh, and the funding bodies, uh, especially the neurogastric tandem grant that helped me start up this work. Thank you very much.